Hey everyone, Ray Del Vecchio here, and in this tutorial, we're going to migrate a WordPress website from one host to another, and you'll see exactly how you can do this with zero downtime. I have all the steps that we're going to go through today listed here, and the first one, you obviously want to create your new hosting account, and if you're not sure which host to choose, I highly recommend HostGator if you're just getting started. I've used them for many, many years for all of my personal and client websites and they've been great to me. So I'll include a link to them in the description below along with a coupon code that'll get you started for the lowest price. The next step is to create a database within that hosting account and that's going to be used to store all of your WordPress database items from the old installation. Once you're done with that we can go back into WordPress and create a backup of our website using a plugin called Duplicator and that's going to give us a zip file and then we want to upload that zip file to the new hosting server. We're going to add an IP address to the hosts file. So if you don't know what this is, this is actually a file on your computer, whether it's your PC or your Mac, that's going to map domain names to IP addresses. So before you make the change to your domain name, obviously it's going to be hosted with your old host, but what we want to do is put in the new host IP address so that on our computer we can access it immediately. And with that done, we'll be able to install our backup on the new host. And once we have everything installed, we can update our DNS domain name settings and eliminate the line from the host file that we added in step five here. So let's jump right into this. I have the new hosting account set up here. And before we make the change to the domain name, the only way that I can access this hosting account is through the IP address. Within your welcome email, you'll probably get this information of your server IP address. And if not there, then when you log into your account, you should be able to see it from your dashboard, depending on your web hosting provider. I copied mine into this notepad file here. So I'm going to copy it. And then to get to the hosting panel, I'm going to add slash cPanel to the end of this IP address. And that should bring us to our cPanel where we can log in and add our database. And we'll log in. I want the databases section here. This is where we want to go to the MySQL databases link. Basically, the database is going to consist of the database name. And then you need to add a user that's going to have access to edit this database. So I have, I usually just like to put this information into a notepad file and then eventually store it maybe within my browser with a password manager such as LastPass. So I'm going to add a database here, and I'll just call this my site. You can really name it whatever you want, and we'll create it. And then let me copy and paste this. Uh, we'll go back, and then I'll paste this into the notepad file. If we scroll down here, we can then add a new user. And I'll just use my first name for this. And we can use the password generator, so I'll copy this and use it. We'll create the user and then I'll paste in the password and the username here. And, and when we transfer the site, this is the information that we'll need to transfer it from one database to the other. So once we have the user created, what we need to do is add this user to the database. So if we scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see that section where we can add user Raymond to the database my site and once we do this we just want to check the box all privileges to make sure that we can edit this database completely and we'll make those changes and it looks like everything's saved here so I should be good to go with the database section and we can then move on to creating a backup of the website so let me go over to the WordPress dashboard over here and I want to go to the plugin section where I can add this plugin that we're going to use to create a backup called duplicator so let me search for that and it should be the first one to pop up here you can see it's got over a million active installations so really really highly rated it's a great plugin so let's install it activate it and take a look at how we can create a backup file of our website and as you see here we have this duplicator menu added to the left So let me click on that and they have a pretty uh, easy to understand screen here <laughs> they, they have these packages we have no packages so it looks like we can create a backup package so I'll create a new one here 
and it, it has a name here for us. We can customize this if we want, but I'm fine with this. It's got the date and then the website name. And then let's check out these other sections here. It looks like right now it's they store the zip file on the web server. If you get the Pro Duplicator plugin, you can connect with Dropbox, Amazon, Google Drive, or FTP. But I'm okay with this for now. We can customize our archive with either the files or the database. So you might want to exclude a folder that you don't want to include in the in the backup. I'm okay with leaving all these as is. I'm going to keep everything with the default value. And then if we go to the installer, it looks like you can pre-fill these fields. But I think once we run the installer, we're going to end up filling these in anyway. So I'm not going to worry about filling this out right at the moment. So we'll click next and it's going to review our website and it looks like we are good to go. So we're going to build our package. And they give us two files here. We have our archive, which is the zip file of all the files from our web server. And then we have the installer, which is a PHP file that we can access from the new host. And it just runs us through the steps to reinstall the archive. So I'm just going to download each of these separately. It looks like you just do the one-click download, which probably zips both of these up into another zip file. And once we have this downloaded, we can open up FileZilla FTP, and that's how we can transfer these files to our web server. I have FileZilla open here, so let's go ahead and do this. And on the left-hand side of the screen, I have a folder that has that installer and the backup zip file. And I just need to connect to my server. So once again, I'm going to do this using the IP address. So let me open up the notepad file here. And I'll put the IP address as the host. And then my cPanel login credentials for the username and password. And then I'll quick connect. And might get that little pop-up. So just pass through that. And then go into your public HTML folder. And this is where we can upload our backup files where we'll then access them and run the installer. So I'll just drag and drop them over here. And this transfer might take a little bit because this is, right now it's a 20 megabyte file, but depending on your website, it might be 100 or 200 megabytes. But we're almost done. There we go. So the next step is we have to add the IP address to the host file so that we can access this installer through the domain name. I have the folder open here that we need to go into and I'll include the the uh, path to this folder for Mac and PC in the description below. Right now you can see that it's C or whatever uh, drive your operating system is installed on and then Windows slash System32 slash Drivers slash ETC and then we're looking for this host file. So I want to open this in Notepad++. This is what I like to use to edit these files. And this is basically a line by line file where you can add IP addresses and map them to domain names. So I'm going to go back into my notepad file and copy this IP address. And I would just want to add a space and then type in the domain name. And then we'll try and save this. And I might need to be in administrator mode. So they're going to have this pop up. So I'm going to give this access to administrator mode and then we'll save it. And let's take a look now at our website because I have it open here. So this is a live view of the website on the old host. And because we just updated that hosts file, if I go to, let me open up an incognito window just to make sure I don't have any cache or cookies saved. I'll go to this domain and we should hopefully see just a blank page with the new host. And there you go. So you can see the two, the two files that we have here are our backup zip file and the PHP. And so this is how you can go to the installer. Just click on the installer.php or you can type it in, you know, yourdomainname.com slash installer.php and that will start running the installer on the new host. So right here we have the step-by-step -step duplicator page. It looks like our archive passed, validation passed. And if we go into the options, I don't think we're going to edit anything here. I'm just going to leave everything at the default value. So I'll just click this I have read and accept the terms and conditions. We'll go to step two. And this is where we need our database username, 
or I'm sorry, the database name, the username, and the password. Most of the time, your web host, the host name is going to be localhost. There's a few exceptions to this, and I know one of them is Network Solutions because I have a client that has some websites hosted there, and I really don't like them. <laughs> I've had a lot of issues with their websites. Most of the time, probably 80 to 90% of the time, you'll just put localhost in the host field. And then if we go back to the notepad file, I can copy and paste my database credentials that we created before. And let's check out the options here. And uh, yeah, I don't want to touch any of these. So we'll test it. We have a success. So we could go to the next step. And they just give you a confirmation box here just to make sure that you want to overwrite whatever is in that database. In our case, this database is blank. So this is the step where you can change your domain name if you'd like. So for this instance, we're changing hosts with the same domain name. But if for some reason you were switching domain names, you can use this step to make sure that every instance of that domain within the WordPress database will get switched to the new domain name. I'm going to leave everything here as is. This is an optional feature where if we want to create a new WordPress admin account, we can do that. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to I'm just going to go through and click the next button. We have made it to the final step. All we have to do is log in and just view the website to make sure everything worked out correctly. Uh, clicking that link brings us to the WordPress admin page. And your WordPress username and login is going to be the same as it was for the old host. And we'll log in just to make sure everything works here. And there we go. We have the toolbar up here that says the site has been successfully migrated. So the final steps, optionally you can give this plugin a review or you can remove the installation file. So I'm going to click that to make sure any leftover files are removed. And they actually show you the files that do get wiped away when you click that button. So that's all it takes to migrate your website using this plugin. It's super easy. The last thing that we need to do is update the domain name settings to make sure that our domain name is going to point to our new web host. So I have my billing account open here. This domain was registered with HostGator. And most of my domains are registered with GoDaddy.com. Either one of these, you can go into the domain name settings. So if you click the settings button here, you can see this is where we can change the name servers. So all you would do is go into the name servers and paste in whatever your name servers are for your new web host. And that should also be included within your welcome email when you sign up to the web hosting or within your hosting dashboard. And once you save that, it normally takes anywhere from 24 hours to 48 hours for those changes to propagate across the web so that people anywhere in the country or the world are going to see your new host versus your old host. And that's going to happen smoothly, as I said, with no downtime because we have identical installations on both of them right now. So once everything's transferred over, you can then cancel your old hosting and you'll be good to go with your new web host. And one last final step is that we want to go back into that hosts file and we can eliminate this line right here so that once our domain name changes take effect, we're going to see how it is represented across the web and not necessarily through this host file on our computer. So that's all there is to migrating your WordPress website. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more WordPress tutorials. I mentioned a few times on this video, I work with local clients and manage their websites and online marketing efforts. So if you're interested in doing the same thing, check out my site, WebsiteProfitCourse.com. You can download a free giveaway, the 15 tools to start your web design business. And these are the tools that I use every single day to manage client websites. At the top of that list is HostGator Web Hosting. They've been my provider of choice for all of my client websites. If you're interested in setting up with them, click the link in the description below. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next tutorial.